common mouth of the ungodly. You hear me? Uh oh. Whoops. <laughs> you with me? Yes. The common language. There is this idea floating around out there. Christian talk just like everybody else. I'm just saying. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. It should be bringing life. <coughs> Look at the second part of the verse. Violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So the language is really different among those that are godly and those that are wicked. Okay? Now, look in uh, chapter 11, verse 8. Now, this again, this is a perfect verse to fit our story. Jehoshaphat and Ahab. I love this. I like the Bible. <laughs> I have so much fun reading it. I hope you're in, you enjoy the Scriptures. Uh, you know, I, when I first came to Korea, I didn't really like Korean food. <laughs> Everything smelled bad. <laughs> right? But you know, I've been here a long time now. Ah, oh, it smells normal. <laughs> I walk past the restaurant and I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. God's Word is like that. When you first taste it, Ah, not so good. Strange words. What is this? It's just a book. But then you, you take in a little bit at a time. And after you've taken it, yeah, oh, this is normal. Oh, I like that. And that's what's happened to me. I'm just saying. Okay. That's what's happened. And, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, okay, 11, uh, <laughs> verse 8. The righteous is delivered from trouble. So even though Jehoshaphat made the alliance with Ahab and went to battle, he was delivered from the trouble. God still was with him. Even though he failed, he made that mistake. God was still with him. Okay? Look at the second half. It comes to the wicked instead. <laughs> that random arrow. You know? God Ahab. Ahab cannot run and hide. God knows where he is. You know? This is the thing I can't understand. People talk about, you know, used to, but they talk about, you know, hiding and running from God. And one of my favorite books of the Old Testament is the book of Jonah. He's trying to run and hide from God only to find out God is just as much at the bottom of the ocean as He is in the highest heavens He's just as much in the Middle East, you know, near uh, Israel and out in Nineveh as He was across the sea in Tarshish. God is He's omnipresent just as much there. And His compassions never fail no matter where He touches and where He's working. And that, that's the same for your life. God's compassions never fail towards you. If you will look to Him in faith, He will show mercy to you. Amen. He will, if you will look to Him in faith and uh, embrace His Son as your Lord and Savior, uh, God's forgiveness will be upon your life. That which bound you can be released. You don't have to be enchained, enslaved. Amen? Amen. Say Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Jehoshaphat, okay? Uh, Chapter 11, 8. Okay, we've got to go to 25, 26. Proverbs 25, 26. Uh, now, and this is a good place for us to jump off back into our text in 2 Chronicles in just a moment. The righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring and a polluted well. Okay? Now, here's, here's the case 
of Jehoshaphat compromising with Ahab. Okay? Now, um, when we live down in Seoul, we like to, I like to climb Namsan Mountain and go to the top where the spring is. Okay, I used to wonder when I first went up there, what are these people doing, you know? They're getting water out of this spring and taking it down. That can't be good for your health. I mean, that's what I thought when I first saw it. No kidding. I mean, I was stupid. Okay? Ignorant. Then I took my empty bottle up there. Okay? And then I started, you know, oh, this is nice. This is nice. And then I saved some money on water, you know. Too, on top of that. And so that fresh water. You see, uh, when the righteous... 26, 25-26. When the righteous falters before the wicked, when they compromise, and the one who claims to know God or knows God compromises with the wicked, then his life is like a murky spring, bad water, polluted, okay, not healthy, okay. So we have to be careful in these matters of godliness. Our, our, even our Christian lives can be unhealthy. Okay. Now let's get back to the text. Second Chronicles. Uh. dangers of associating too closely with those who do not know God. And we're looking at when we compromise with sin, we lose our power with God and our influence with people. Okay? Verse 1, 2 Chronicles 18. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. By marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him. And the people who were with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, 400 men. Remember, this is Ahab. And he's getting their house prophets together. These are not what we think of prophets of the Lord. Okay, Remember the story of Elijah. So he gets his prophets together and said to them, Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, he knew something wasn't right. He knew these were not true prophets. He knew that. Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here? All those years in the northern kingdom, is there not still a prophet here? that they may inquire of Him. So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Because he never prophesies good concerning me. Yeah. The good life he ought to have, right? <laughs> he doesn't tell me good things. <laughs> But he always prophesies evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such things. So he's telling the king to get a good prophet. First he's telling the king to pray. You need to seek God before you go to battle. Now that, that's, a, that's a Christian value. Before we make the, any uh, life decision, we ought to pray. Christian value. Before we make any life decision, we ought to look to God's Word. What does it say about it? That solves a lot of our problems. 
Okay? And so the, look to the true prophet. But he, here's the, the non-believer's view. Ahab. He hadn't even thought to ask the prophets to find out, you know. He hadn't even thought to, to get uh, in, Micah of Imla over there to find out what the Lord wants him to do. He hadn't been inquiring of God. This is the life without God. That's not normal. That's the life without God. Verse 8. Then the king of Israel called one of his officers and said, Bring Micah the son of Imlah quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah clothed in their robes, sat each on his throne, and they sat at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Zedekiah the son of Chanana uh, had made horns of iron for himself here, see, he's got the horns. and he, he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you will gore the Syrians until they are they're destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so. Go up the realm of Gilead and prosper. For the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. And the king's going, Amen. Ahab's like, Yes. Yes. Then the messenger who was sent to find Micaiah, he had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him saying, Now listen, the words of the prophet with one accord encouraged the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever my God says, I will speak. Then he came to the king. And the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? And he said, Go and prosper and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said, How many times shall I make you swear that you will tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So the king knew he was being sarcastic. You know sarcasm? Yeah, it's all in the Bible. So be careful when you're reading it. Yeah. It's a lot of sarcasm. This was sarcasm from the prophet. Yeah, just go on to battle. God's going to prosper you. That's what the prophet was saying. Because he was so frustrated. He knew what would happen to him if he told him the truth. He knew the king was not interested in the Word of God. Sometimes I wonder this too. You know, I wonder sometimes, why do people come to church? Why? Do we come to hear the Word of the living God? Do we come to find direction for our life? Do we come to find out what our sins are? Do we, or, or why do we come? Why did Ahab want to, to uh, talk to Micaiah? He knew Micaiah would not give him a good message. He'd just tell him his life was a mess. And that God is the answer. Isn't that the same message we tell you today? Isn't that the same message you heard from the Lord? Your life is a mess. You need to repent and get things right with God. Basically the same message. Oh, what a story. So Micah goes into the story and he says, and I uh, uh, don't know that far to go. Let, let's go ahead to the notes here. Yeah. Now, how did Jehoshaphat compromise in the story, okay? Well, he joined in, and now J here. J is Jehoshaphat, okay? I've got J's son and A's daughter, okay? Jehoshaphat's son, Ahab's daughter, okay? Now, this was the first big mistake, I think, that Jehoshaphat made in the story. And that was aligning, making an alliance with the family of Ahab. Okay? And so there was an arranged marriage of Jehoshaphat's son, Jehoram, with Ahab's daughter, Athaliah. Now she comes up later in the story. She's really wicked later. Now, yeah. <laughs> Now, I just want to use this because remember we're talking about points of godliness. 
in the Christian life. There are certain dangers associated with marrying a non-Christian. Okay? Now the Bible refers to this continually. Okay? And uh, it, it refers over and over again about the dangers of it. In the Old Testament, it had to do with mixing with the ungodly nations. Okay? Because Israel wanted to keep a pure uh, ethnicity and religion. Okay? So it had to do with that in the Old Testament. When we get to the New Testament, it's not about ethnicity anymore. It's not about culture. It's about God and religion and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And the difficulties that are caused when one is a Christian, one is a non-Christian. Okay? So, so now... So in the beginning, and of course many people are in this situation now, that's a, that's a matter for counseling. Okay, but in the beginning, if you're not married, there are dangers associated with a believer marrying a non-believer. I've seen when believers persisted in the marriage, normally, it, not always, but normally it pulls the believer away from God. Somebody say, yeah, I thought. Yeah. It's a sensitive subject. I know. It is. Normally, that's what happens. Not always. Okay? Now, the Bible does allow for this. It, it says, in the case where two non believers are married and one of them becomes a Christian, okay? They are to dwell together. As long as the non believer is with them, the Christian can live their faith. But if the non-believer decide, decides, hey, I don't want anything to do with you, then, guess what? The Christian's free. That's New Testament. Paul taught that in the New Testament. Okay? Now, it's a little different story from what is uh, here because Jehoshaphat should have known better than to a, a, arrange this marriage of his son because it, it not only later it becomes just disastrous. Okay? Now half the world arranges marriages. Okay? That's the way it is. Half the world. Now I've seen good arranged marriages and I've seen bad ones. Both. Okay? Um, in, in America where we don't so much think about arranging marriages, every man does what's right in his own eyes. You hear me? That's kind of the philosophy. Okay? But in the church, here's the principle. The believer should marry a believer. That's the principle. Okay? Now, it does not keep us from problems. But it does keep us aligned with God. Our prayers can go cry out to God directly together. Okay? And when everything else collapses, we have God. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm just saying. Okay. Now, ladies, those of you here are maybe married to non-believer men. If you're here, your wife's not a believer. Um, here's the thing. You pray like crazy for that spouse of yours. You hear me? Like crazy. Crazy. Pray. Pray. Pray for them. You live like crazy for God. Let them see what a Christian is. Let them hear what a believer is. Let them understand that you, that you love them and that you love God, but you love God first. Okay? I think I'm right. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. I got one amen over there. <laughs> Somebody say Jehoshaphat. <laughs> this is heavy, okay? It's heavy, okay? <laughs> now, so he compromised in joining with Ahab's family. Then he compromised in, in this fellowship, this alliance they brought together. Now it's really interesting. This gets real serious. Look over at chapter 19. 2 Chronicles 19, 2. This is right near the end, okay, of the, um, uh, the story that I wanted to cover today, but I can't get anywhere near there. But anyway, that's okay. Look at 19.1. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. That's after the battle uh, with uh, the Syrians, okay? And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, 
went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, okay, so another prophet comes out. So we've got Micaiah and we've got Jehu. Good prophets in this story, okay? Here's what the prophet said to Jehoshaphat. Should you help the wicked and love those that hate the Lord? Okay, so that's Jehoshaphat's alliance with Ahab. The prophet says, Should you help the wicked and love those that hate the Lord? Therefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Look at that. Oh my. I don't want the wrath of God on me. <laughs> I believe God also can be a God of wrath. Okay? He is a God of love. But He is a God of wrath. And I don't want His wrath on me. If you're in a condition in your life that you are far from God, maybe you're promoting things in your life that are against God, and, and you're kind of enjoying those things against God, I have to declare to you, God is a God of wrath too. Amen. He's not only a God of love. He's not going to cuddle up to you in your sin. Okay? God is a God of wrath.